Every God of War had had power fantasy when it comes to Kratos, meaning that you, know, you go into fights and you feel really strong. You feel powerful, you feel like you can take them on, you can feel like you can take anything on. No matter how small, no matter how big, it's like Kratos can handle it. So for this game, even though we were changing pretty much everything about the combat, we wanted to make sure that Kratos still felt like he was a powerhouse. The two things that we had talked about early on were like, one, we don't want to make an open world game, two, we don't want to uh, just mimic Dark Souls, as much as we like that game, there is kind of this interesting loop inside of it that we wanted to capture. That's when we really, I think, started embracing the fact that not all God of War just has to be charge in, hit, and then sort of wake up after everything's over, right? We just didn't have that strategic element, that cerebral engagement. And all of the pieces that we put together throughout development put the player in a position that they have to think as they're fighting. For this game, you know, he's got a new weapon, his Leviathan Axe, and with this weapon we wanted to be a little bit more tactical, still feel powerful at the end of the day, but have a little bit more decision making and a little bit more deliberate actions on the player. We've created scenarios in which, hey, it's advantageous to really experiment with this. And we've noticed that once people start seeing that, oh, I'm gonna try that one now, right? Because we give you a lot. We want to make sure that, hey, when, when you win this fight, did you win it slightly different than this other player won the fight? Maybe you kicked them into a wall, stunned them, and grabbed them. Maybe you tripped them and then slammed your axe on top of them to split them in half. There's multiple ways to handle enemies this game. But I love the kind of trick shot stuff with the axe. So like uh, throwing and tripping the character and then repositioning myself to put another character between me and the axe, recalling the axe and taking the character from the ground, popping him up, hitting another character in that line from behind, grabbing and then comboing that, and launching him up, and then throwing a runic attack on him. Once you throw your axe, we didn't want Kratos to be useless. Yeah, we wanted to make sure that he still had a move set, so he's got a shield that can expand on command now. A lot of his bare hand attacks uses that to get more damage. With this thing, he can stun much easier, much faster than the axe itself. Well, Kratos can throw the axe. He has ranged abilities, right? If you're blocking, you have to block but the addition of Atreus means I can block and actually fire arrows. So I can strategize that I can open somebody up while maintaining some safety and then quickly get in while they're opened up and then follow that up with something. So it gives you a really interesting sense that I can both have an aggressive uh, stance and a defensive stance at the same time. God of War was, you know, one, the boat deck, right? On the, the Hydra ship, one section, bam, you already understand kind of all, all, all of the base combat stuff, and then we incorporate a little bit of magic later, so. This was far more ambitious, and I think, honestly, you know, the audiences are more adept at games. They've played a lot more games. The game industry has progressed and matured, so people are looking for an inherently a greater depth to the games that they're playing. For the players.